If you want to come out tonight, have a party with a massive multi-rig party with over 30 sound systems. We were going to give two fingers up to the horrible fucking conservative government who want to shit on the poor and give nothing more than money to the rich. Well, come out and we'll have a party because it's our right to party and fuck them. We're going to enjoy ourselves tonight, Saturday the 30th. Call back after 10 p.m. You chose to find your ultimate height To dance yourself until you no longer feel the ground on which you stand This rides to the unknown For many people across the UK, Saturday night means more than just going out to a pub or a club. At around 12 o'clock, many are only just finding out their destination. Illegal raves take place up and down the country every weekend. The venues range from disused warehouses and offices to fields, woods and scrublands. The ravers find out about these locations through a series of phone networks or word of mouth. With new political objectives comes a different culture and new way of life. This, however, has been stigmatised and looked down on by the ruling classes. As a part of this movement myself, I decided to pick up a camera and show just what things are really like. See for yourself, judge for yourself and make your own decisions. The culture behind your squat parties and your illegal raids obviously comes from the acid scene, early 90s. You know, where raving you know, wasn't the accepted norm at that time. Um, you know, clubs were playing a lot of different music and they had to evolve this side scene of, you know, where, where it's going to grow from, really, in a way. The first real one I remember was in Kennington. And this was like how proper old school squat parties used to be. Massive. You know, like, like you've never been to a rave really like it in your life. Some of the illegal raves I've been to, some of the buildings especially, you um, can always remember, you know, from old ex-aircraft hangars to MI5 buildings to just, you know, lock up warehouses. Um, I remember one New Year's Eve, it was in a, a, a complex of aircraft hangars. There was about four or five of them, but massive, big warehouses, really big. You'd actually get lost, they were so big, you know. So that was really, really memorable. The top floor had no roof on it. Like, you fucking looked like the floor was about to clap. The whole place was the colour of bird shit. Just white and black, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it looked like the whole place was covered in newspaper. No roof and the most banging techno people having it. No roof, daylight. Just fucking having it, like, serious. The first time I went out, I was amazed. It was, I was like, I'm home kind of thing because the music, the atmosphere, and you can stay as long as you want until you have to leave when you wanted to leave. Because I left the Scott party around seven, and it was still kicking off from going on. I didn't want to leave, but because all my friends wanted to leave, I had to leave. But I was very, very impressed. It's just a whole different sort of vibe and different sort of group of people that go there, and you do notice it. They all sort of have a sort of dress sense as well. Um, and everyone's just there just to generally have a good time. I started going drum and bass raving. Mostly used to go to mass, uh, to two nights in particular. One was deck effects, the other one was movement. Used to go every Saturday night, uh, but then six o'clock in the morning was too early for us and we wanted to carry on partying. So we looked for other options. Other options ended up being squat parties. We, uh, we were given a telephone number by a friend of ours. Telephone number, I still remember, even though it's about 13 years ago, it was 0208 959 7525. Used to call that 11 o'clock on a Saturday evening. And that telephone number, 95% of the time, would give us a legitimate party to go to. Wait. 
My first impressions of squat parties were, I, I thought they were out of this world. It was, it was nothing like I'd ever experienced before. The drum and bass scene was amazing. I, I absolutely loved it. It was my thing, big time. Um, but it was, you know, it was mostly young London kids my age going out drum and bass raving, taking ecstasy, and not much else. The squat party scene, however, had a much larger mix of music, a much larger mix of culture. Uh, had a lot of people from around the world, a lot of people from Spain, a lot of people from Italy used to come over for London squat parties. Uh, the range of drugs, I was very much into experimentation in those days. The range of drugs and, and the pureness of them. Um, and just the, the general atmosphere.